Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be discussing moons of different planets in our solar system. But I think the biggest question I want to answer is, or try to answer, why are all of the bigger moons in our solar system so completely different from each other? None of them really resemble one another. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So here are the major moons in our solar system. Uh, basically four of them are from Jupiter, one of them is from Saturn, and one is from our own planet Earth. If you were to compare them visually at least, um, all of them seem to be completely alien and completely different from one another. And right now I'm basically colliding all of them into one large moon that's most likely going to be called Ganymede. Now, why is it though? Why do they look so, so different? For example, if you look at uh, Jupiter's moon Io, it seems to resemble some sort of a yellowish um, orange-like object. It has a lot of um, volcanoes on the surface, it has very unusual color formations, and it practically has no craters whatsoever. However, its uh, sisters, the farthest uh, Galilean moon called Callisto, and uh, the largest moon in our solar system known as Ganymede are also very different, not just from each other, but from Io as well. They do have a lot of craters, it seems. They also have these unusual features on the surface, a lot of uh, cracks and scratches everywhere. And to add to all of this unusual uh, formation, um, there's also Europa, which is also different altogether and basically has a lot of lot of um, ice on the surface. Uh, then if you look at um, Titan, the biggest moon of Saturn, um, it in itself is completely different from everything we just saw. It has very thick atmosphere, as a matter of fact this is most likely the most Earth-like uh, environment in our solar system. It also has uh, liquid on the surface, it has really unusual effects that make it more of a planet than basically a moon. And its structure and even it are, its looks are basically unique in our solar system. And finally, our own moon, the moon, which in itself is also an anomaly. It has uh, an unusual sort of um, density, very high density, and its appearance resembles more a planet, uh, it's actually very similar in appearance to Mercury, than an actual moon, uh, as is its structure, because for the most part, it's basically made up of rock and metal. And for comparison, here's actually what Mercury looks like, and as you can see, it, it actually surprisingly resembles our own moon very, very much. And so, what exactly is happening here, and why is it that all of these moons are basically so different? And I think uh, the real explanation is that in the beginning, when they were just formed, they were pretty similar to each other, just like Earth, Venus, and Mars were very similar. But over time, because of various effects, they all changed completely. We're going to start with this, actually. We're going to start with Titan. And um, what we're going to do, I might as well actually disable the gravity, which will eliminate all of the um, atmospheric effects here. So you get to see the surface. And so, for the most part, uh, the surface of Titan is actually well, in a sense, relatively similar to objects like Europa. And what, I'm, what I mean by this is that it's essentially um, a nice world that has an ocean underneath. Uh, they both do, and they both seem to have uh, a relatively similar density and composition. But uh, Titan also has a cold enough temperature that it, it can maintain liquid lakes of methane and ethane, and even has uh, like methane rain and um, a lot of atmospheric effects formed by uh, various interaction with methane and, and ethane. And so in that sense, it's more complex. It, it is very much like, um, like a planet, essentially. However, Europa um, is, it's a nice world that doesn't have any atmosphere. And most of its uh, activity happens underneath the actual ice shelf. Uh, similarly, if you were to look at uh, Ganymede and... Callisto that we're going to place next to each other. Um, they are also ice worlds. They are definitely very similar to Europa in sort of composition. 
But because of their position around Jupiter, and specifically uh, this being the closest of the three, this being the second closest and this being the farthest, they um, either did not get enough tidal effects to essentially, uh, well basically, create layers where you have ice on top, uh, liquid in the middle, and harder core in the middle. So this is a pretty good sort of representation of what's happening here. However, Ganymede um, did experience a lot of collisions, but not enough tidal heat to actually create these layers. So it has a mixture of both rock and ice inside. And so it's a lot more sort of um, mixed on the inside as opposed to Europa. At the same time, uh, Ganymede is closer than Callisto, so it received way more collisions and they were higher speed uh, collisions. So its surface and also its internal composition um, as, a, as a result of this was a little bit hotter during the collisions and so it actually got to mix a little bit better than, than Callisto. And so Callisto is really the one that didn't really get enough energy, did not get enough collisions. And so it's sort of um, what all of the moons most likely looked like. It's almost like the face of the um, early objects here because this is probably what a lot of them looked like before the collisions. Um, and in this sense, Callisto is a really good representation of what many of these moons resembled in the beginning. But obviously it did receive some collisions and so it did change over time. So it's not exactly a perfect copy of, uh, of an ancient moon. And then we have Io, which is actually the closest moon of Jupiter. And it's so close to Jupiter that it's experiencing a lot of tidal effects. And so even though it most likely looked like these moons before, um, over time uh, the volcanic eruptions on the surface uh, started happening so much that they literally covered the surface of Io with all of this yellowy orangey stuff. Although in itself, it's still kind of a mystery why it even has so much sulfur and also why the density of this moon is much higher than other moons. It has the highest density of all of the moons in our solar system, even higher than our own moon. And so in that sense, there is still not everything that's been answered about Io. But even though it may have looked like Callisto and also like Ganymede before, the volcanoes and the volcanic eruptions overall uh, smoothed the surface with time and made it look this way. And lastly, we have our own mysterious moon, the moon. Now, to answer why our moon looks completely different from all these objects and why it seems to resemble Mercury, we have to understand its origins. We think that it was born as a result of a collision of a planet with early Earth. And we think that this was formed as a result of a lot of materials flying off those collisions and uh, basically resulting in the moon itself. It most likely actually was a formation of a kind of a ring or a cloud around the earth first and then sort of uh, condensed into an object that we now call the moon. But um, when you really kind of do the analysis, you realize that in terms of composition and even in terms of the actual um, structure, this resembles our Earth very, very much. This is kind of like what Earth may even look like in like future, in the future, billions and billions of years um, after it lost its atmosphere. So because Moon has uh, much lower gravity, it lost a lot of the, um, well, obviously it lost liquid water and it lost all of its atmosphere. Um, and then it got bombarded by a tremendous amount of stuff. And so this is more of a face of like a binary planet and or even just a regular planet like Mercury. So in that sense, our moon is definitely its own sort of beast. It's not really what you would call a typical moon. And there are actually studies that even analyzed how rare this object is. We today think that this might be one of the most rare types of moon um, in our universe, not even our galaxy, for a one simple reason. Our moon is actually close enough to our planet and it's massive enough to stabilize the rotation of our planet. Uh, because of the moon, our planet does not wobble as much. If we didn't have the moon, our planet would be wobbling just like all other planets all over the place. Um, and its seasons would be always, always different. It would be always out of whack. But because the moon is there, it stabilizes the rotation. And so we think that this helped evolve life on our planet. And so this is kind of the story of these six unusual weirdos that we call moons. Um, all of them have very different appearance, but may have had similar origins. All of them have their own sort of 
I guess you could call them personalities, but really it's just what makes them themselves. And what's interesting is that as we discover these objects around other planets, we'll realize how pretty much all of the moons are going to be completely different, even more different than planets. All of them will have different surfaces, different structure, and probably even all kinds of weird life living there. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to do in this video. Let's finish by re-enabling the gravity and uh, watching these objects essentially collide with one another and create some kind of a beast of a moon. Uh, called, I guess, Mega Moon? Super Moon? It's probably going to be called Ganymede because it's the largest one of these. But we'll see what happens. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe and maybe click the bell button to be notified about future videos. And uh, my apologies for the neon green. It's getting cold outside and this is my warmest jacket that I had nearby. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Consider supporting this channel on Patreon and thank you for all uh, the support that you've given me so far. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye-bye.